I think a very warm after a uh, very good afternoon to you. I think uh, this uh, this the the the, the theme of the you know the theme of the this panel has been very correctly said that one political scientist follows another political scientist, <laughs> and uh, although there were a lot of things so which you talked about about the nation state, but I don't have to talk more on that. Maybe we can take it up later. But nonetheless, we should also remember that uh, no matter how much you criticize nation state, there has been no alternative found despite efforts of Marx. Uh, that uh, the so called communitarian society has not come up so nonetheless nation state still uh, retains its own importance in our own context of things and uh, as a as a follow up of that we also have to see that the various processes that are part of that so called state system need to be also put into motion where the state does really fulfill the wishes of the people to the to the extent that uh, it can and that calls for the increased capacity of the state in that context uh, we have been told that you know in the context of informative society we talk about knowledge is power and we also talk of information's power power is a very very favorite concept to students of political science we know that the definition of power is the ability to influence the others uh, in the way that we want or we desire the things to be done so i think in this context we know education uh, as a part of the knowledge uh, regime or you call emerging knowledge system does retain a very very powerful influence uh, in the context of the emerging uh, new information society in the poorer countries we are yet to be called information society because less than majority of the population still is engaged in uh, sort of you know this information industries which you know Bang bangalore is one of them but many other uh, states don't fall into that so nonetheless we have to see, remember that we are in rising information society where knowledge is going gaining more ascendance over anything else and by the gaining of knowledge we are probably trying to influence the operational of our political system uh, to to fulfillment the wishes of the what you call it the large masses I think in this context we have looked into it. Uh, I have looked at education, and I have seen as to how the how the sort of reforms in the so-called way of we impart education to students can at all help us to become a real stakeholders in the information society. And uh, when you look into it, we have found the title of the paper that I talked about is ICT and the quality uh, quality education in the emerging information emerging network society, where we have seen as to how the the poorer countries, including India, is now being called upon to go for a hybridization of an education system where more and more emphasis is being given on the application of ICT in the context of imparting education right from the school level or right from the uh, right from the university level up to the school level although this is a like a reverse uh, sim reverse system that we are following but now nonetheless we have now emphasized that probably the school education needs to be more emphasized in the context of the hybridization where more and more emphasis should be given on the ICT than what we uh, India had been doing till recently uh, at the higher education level. So when we talk about uh, this uh, ICT, we all understand that the whole panorama of uh, event came up simply because that it was felt the instruction technology has to be given its due importance in the context of educational planning and implementation for the for the knowledge uh, and economic development of the country. Since uh, it is it is felt that it is a key to the enhancement of quality in the context of imparting of education. We have also seen that. Uh, education is felt to be very important in the context of poor countries that uh, it can only uh, by, by providing good education we can probably bring about some kind of an equality amongst the people which otherwise is absent in the context of uh, in our own economy or in the context of our so called market society. We also find that it was also felt that with the educational technology being given due importance probably the quality of education will also grow and it will also cre create what is important for a, de for a developing democratic country called India. Uh, that, that, that it will create a new educational culture. We find that uh, in a country we still find, although we tend to talk of literacy level very, very high, but we still find there are more neo-illiterates, despite the fact the literacy movement has gained, uh, they still need to be educated in the proportion of the term so as to be participant in the India's political culture. We also, it was also felt that society will have to move from the, from the so-called technological possibility, which was realized in the realm of the growth of influential technologies, in the educational field for uh, what is called quality education. We also found that, that uh, they all, it was also felt that in a, in a country, if a country has to be more knowledge oriented, if the country has to turn itself into knowledge economy, we have seen how, how uh, various developments took place in the context of CDAT, in the context of CDOT, and how Sam Petroda, uh, despite uh, he, was he was born in India, although he was living in America, he had to come and uh, sort of you know, play an important role in the growth of the information revolution on a country. And where he also saw that, uh, he also showed us to how the, in the context of ICTs, India can become a world leader rather than become a follower of the Western world. I think one of the very, very 
nice thing that he talks about is where, which we know that we are all very familiar with the western uh, developments uh, be it in the area of technology be it in the area of politics be it in the area of economics but uh, you know and one of the technological marvel that uh, the western telecommunication world had come up with isdn we know uh, is very familiar if you have been talking to people outside the world uh, in the days when there was no skype uh, it was called international subscriber dialing network and to to sort of show our own indignation or indignized knowledge to be more powerful he said india simply does not need it so that shows that there are a lot of scope to develop our own alternative model of uh, quality education based on the ict uh, if we are really determined to put things in order in other words we also find that uh, it was also found that the emergence of a and in the context uh, the priority was uh, felt that the priority should be given to to a recent rapid and regulated growth of uh, use of it in the context of improvement of our school education but we also saw that the problem that have, that was faced at the school level was that the school all the schools given the fact they are located in very very remote corners of the country where education uh, where development is is yet to make its presence felt in the context of enrichment or empowerment of people in the context of daily living we found that the schools had to go through a kind of a dual mode of education where Uh, the the so called the schools at the in the urban developed centers of the country were able to go in for a rapid deployment of it uh, in the context of the imparting of school education while the schools at the in the villages remote areas uh, of the country like in the northeast they were not able to have have so much of resources to provide the so called it based education the problem the challenge was here that how uh, if at all the all the schools all the children of this of the new generation uh, gen next as is called it in india has to be made information rich they have to be provided with such ict based education so the challenge was how to how to sort of harmonize the application of icts and the development requirements within the our educational system for bringing in equal opportunities to all when we looked into much later we found that the schools have been uh, schools even in the rural areas besides that of urban areas have felt the need or felt compelled to go into an ict mode of education because they felt that in the context of the rise of the Uh, market economy in the own country there was a lot of demand for the ict skill based education uh, educationally trained youths who could be employed in the various sectors of the economy in that context we found that the some of the schools uh, started complaining that because of the uh, fact that they are positive of resources they would not have that much money to provide education but nonetheless we found uh, in the study that that uh, given the fact there was uh, no other option uh, given the fact there were a lot of challenges in the sector the schools even in the rural areas have been forced to go in for uh, ict based education with increased support from the government in order to make the, their own students more employable in the country in other words when we look into the education we find that that given the fact uh, that the educational process has become more interactive it has become more intense it has also become more highly individualized uh, where it is offering tailored education to people uh, you know in in keeping with their requirements uh, given their geographical location in their own country we also found that education has become also very very highly flexible where the so called natural language training is also gaining is more importance in other words we find that we are going into some kind of a system where the educational uh, developments based on ict has been able to help the so called disadvantaged sections of our own society to be able to be to be the stakeholders in the emerging market economy of the country uh, which was not the case in the past we also found lastly just to what sec uh, i will only conclude saying that that the that given the choice even if the student would like to go in for a kind of a mixed model of education since the traditional model had a teacher to face to face interaction but nonetheless uh, since this cost is very high the schools have certainly uh, been able to provide them with, them with the both of the, both the options where we find that the not only the educational goals are being able to be attained in keeping with the demands of the market economy but also that the so called indian traditional culture way of intercultural way of interacting with the students is still being continued this this shows how how if at all we do really make use of icts in a proper manner we can be as powerful as we think to be i think in this context we only have to remember little uh, one particular saying where when we talk about knowledge is power we also have to uh, or the other words we all know that the us president share is the most powerful uh, institution in the uh, world simply because uh, the saying the reason that's given is that the the chair is what the shareholder makes use of it uh, if we are able to use the icts in the proper sense of the term given the fact there could be a lot of negativities which we talk into talk talk we could uh, go into it but nonetheless we have to remember that the positive developments can only be ensured only when we look at the thing positively and keep the negatively keep the negativities little bit on the sideline thank you thank you very much Peter.